Welcome to our summer party. I think we're missing two letters here, aren't we? UK summer party. Okay, guaranteed the tip raining the moment you mention the word summer. Well, I've just come back with uh, Josiane, Ruby and Kirk from a place where there was no rain, where there was summer. It was hot. It was awesome. We had a great holiday. We could have our holiday early because these guys just finished exams. So we made the most of it and it was fabulous. But you know what? I found every summer has its own soundtrack. Every summer has its own rhythm. And do you want to know what the soundtrack was for our summer? Just gone, like two weeks away. You want to hear it? Yeah. All right, let's hear what the soundtrack was by the pool. Feel free to dance. And we went down to Sydney Harbour for the, the New Year's Eve fireworks and it was incredible, but it was a different song then. Do you want to know what that soundtrack was? Here you go. Every year, every summer there's a song, isn't there? You hear the song and it makes you think about the good times you had that summer. I remember Basil Dip. Oh, it was so good that summer. Okay. So tonight, I want to find out what summer songs you guys know. Now, I've asked for two people to compete in this, but they can have some help. So if Paul and if Yami can come up, you are the competitors. Yeah. All right, this is yours. All right. And this is yours. Okay. So that way I know who's answering the question. So what's going to happen is you can get a friend to help. All right, this is, this is phone a friend, ask a friend. All right, because you might not want to ask the same friend each time. You might know the answers and if you do that, it's fine. But if you don't, you might need to get someone to help you. But guys, you can't call out or this just dies terribly. Okay, so we are going to put some words up on the screen. You have to make your noise so I know who's first. If You've got to tell me the missing word. Then you've got to tell me the name of the song and then who sang it. Oh, okay. This might be where you need some help. All right, so let's have a look at the first one. Okay, yummy. All right, here we go. Um, it's from Greece. Yes. Um, by Danny Zuko and Sandy. Sandy? Is that her name? Who played? Oh, anyway. In the movie. Anyway, um, so. <laughs> <laughs> tell me more, tell me more. Like, does he have a. Does he drive a car? Oh, it's close. All right, let's have a listen. <laughs> it's just a car. All right, we'll give you two out of three. Well done, Yami. You're the first one. All right. Paul, you might need to get some help. Okay. Right, next one. Ready? Okay. Now, if you know the answer, you can put your hand up to help. Oh, oh, Yami. All right. No more working for a week or two. Yes. Okay. That's the right word. Okay. Who sang it and what's it called? Ruth. Ruth. Yeah. Yeah, let's have a listen. Working for a week or two. Fun and laughter on a summer holiday. No more worries for me or you. For a week or two. They see summer We're holiday. Going. You all know it. Okay. Ready? Okay, third one. Get some help. Get some help. Put your hand up if you know it, if you can help him. Not you, Ruby. <laughs> oh, make up a word. Was there a squeak? No one knows out there. No one knows a missing word. Stop. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
Maybe we should play a little bit of a song just to help him. Does this... Just maybe just a little bit before. Can we do that? Does that help? Does that help? Oh, 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 oh. Is Ruby helping you cheat? <laughs> okay. Full loose. Oh, okay. Now he shook. Did he shake? All right. I've got to give him a chance. Okay. Can I call Sam to help me? Yeah, Samuel can help you. Yo, oh, that's the name of the song. What's the missing word? <laughs> Alright, let's play a bit more. Now every time Mailbox, I gotta hold myself. Mailbox. Oh, man. You've all got to join in now in the chorus. Alright, we can curl it now. Alright, Katrina and the waves. Oh, of course. Oh. Okay, some of you guys, you need to, you know... Pull out the happy, you know, if you go on Spotify, it's got like summer tunes, you listen on that. All right, next one. All right, go, go get, maybe ask some of the old people to help. Okay, summer four. This one is definitely you might need to tag an older friend. Okay. This is the trick question. You know, Sheila and Ian can help, they might know. Tim, Tim might know. Get Tim to help you. Go, 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 go get him. All right, Tim, come on. Ah, oh, forever. Forever. forever is correct. Yeah. <laughs> Who sang it? <laughs> Name of the song. Oh, let's have a listen then. You are the apple of my eye. Forever you'll stay in my heart. Stevie Wonder, you are the sunshine of my life. Oh, I've loved okay, you thank me. you. All right. How many have you got? You've got one, you've got two, three. You've got three, okay. Let's go. Actually, we can have the two from, you can have the extra from Forever from Tim. All right. Next one, we've got, all right. This one's a big song. Oh, oh, yummy. Porch. Song name? Oh. Can you take the artist? Come on. Send it on your mama's phone. It's it's porch. Listen then, you've got the right one. Stand it on your mama's porch. You told me that you wait for me. Oh, when you held my hand. I knew that it was now or never. Those were the best days of my life. Summer of 69, Brian Adams. The best thing to come out of Canada. Okay. <laughs> Kirk and I had a Brian Adams song in our we wedding ceremony. It was beautiful. Yeah, okay. Last one. You, you will get this. Get that, get that shaker ready. You will get this one. It's this century. Okay, you ready? Okay. Let's pull it up. Oh! <laughs> Yummy. I'll be riding shotgun. Uh, song name? Shotgun. shotgun. Artist? George Ezra. Let's listen. Ready? Me, me, you know where I'll be. I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun. Feeling like a someone. I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun. Feeling like a It's a great song, isn't it? I love George Ezra. His Glastonbury set was amazing. Well done, Yanni. You are the winner. Yay! Oh, can I have my noisy things back? Yeah, I'll save them for another time. All right. 
We'll be sending you some playlists um, there, Paul, just for you to learn, you know. <laughs> you know, all, all those different songs I can think, I can associate memories with. There's a rhythm that comes with summer and music is a big part of it. I think maybe because there's parties and barbecues and gatherings and you're feeling happy and you associate the music with good times, don't you? And so, you know, summer is great. And I want to encourage you to have a great summer this year. We're about to start the holiday and I just think, you know, we're getting rid of the worst bit now. All right, the rain's coming and then the sun will remember to shine and it will be great. But, you know, summer, actually holidays, are an invention from God. God invented holidays. The word holiday actually comes from holy day. And, you know, we often associate holidays with, like, playing and, um, you know, just having a good time ourselves. But actually, they were always about, originally, us hanging out with God and us being refreshed with God. And, you know, God was the one who invented weekends and holidays. And if we look at the start of the Bible, the very first weekend is in Genesis chapter 2. And it takes place after God has finished creating the world. And God is the first person or character to have a weekend. And we read here in Genesis 2, verses 1 to 3, "'Heaven and earth were finished down to the last detail.'" By the seventh day, God had finished his work. On the seventh day, he rested from all his work. He had made the universe, he'd made the earth, he'd made the stars, the moon, the sun, the oceans, the mountains, the animals, the birds, the fish, the vegetation, and he made humanity. And then it's time for him to finish, to have a rest. Now, he doesn't have a rest because he's exhausted. He has a rest because he's completed what he set out to do and originally that was the point of rest you stop because you've done what is needed to be done okay and it says here God bless the seventh day he made it a holy day holiday holy day because on that day he rested from his work all the creating God had done so you know as Christ followers we need to be like God we need to stop and have a rest. We need to have holy days. So, you know, don't feel like you're slacking off when you're having a holiday. You're actually being like God. This is what you're meant to do. You're meant to have holy days, days of rest, because there's a sense of completion. And I know for a lot of you, you've finished exams, you've finished a, a season in your life, you've worked hard. And yes, you may be a little tired, but this is actually about going, ha, ah, good on me. Yeah, I've finished. Well, I got through that. That's awesome. Thank you, God, for getting me through that. And God, I want to rest with you now. So God creates the first weekend. And, you know, um, in terms of world cultures, it's been from the Judaic Christian cultures that we had the weekend. Okay, There's, it, it wasn't always in ancient cultures to have a rest. But God says you need a rest. Hands up if you need a rest. Yes, we all need a rest. Not only did he create weekends, but he created festivals. And in the Old Testament, the uh, first part of the Bible, we see that God tells his people three times a year to go to a festival. And these, when these times of the year came about, they're always the same time each year, the people would travel in family groups to the place where God's worship um, was centred in Israel, and they would celebrate these different things. So it was kind of like going to Glastonbury without the drugs and without the stinky toilets, okay? But there were a mass movement three times a year to these festivals. And again, it's, it was a festival where God was the centre of it. And in each of these festivals, something different was remembered about God, about the human's relationship with God. So for the first one, the Feast of Unleavened Bread which is called Passover, which takes place around the same time as Easter now, they remembered that God saved them. They remembered that they were once slaves in Egypt and God did all these miracles and he brought, took them out of slavery to become free people. And they were never to forget that God did that amazing rescue. So the way to remember was with a party. Okay, the way to remember was to come together with your families and friends and to celebrate that you were free. The second festival, the Festival of Weeks or um, what uh, became known as Pentecost, 
happens um, about 10 weeks or so later and uh, it, it was um, celebrated at the start of the harvest season. So they were just about to start working super hard and getting the crops in. So God says, just before you do that, I want you to trust me by taking a little break now that I'm going to look after you through this harvest time, which seems like a weird time to have a holiday. You've got all this work about to happen, but actually sometimes you need to pause and go, God, I'm only going to get through this with you. Okay, that's what that pause says. Sometimes when we stop, we're saying, God, it's not all up to me. It's actually up to you. And then the third festival, the Feast of Tents, took place at the end of the harvest time. So they've just finished working really hard day and night, got those crops in, and that was a festival of completion. It's just like, oh, thank you. We got there and look at all you've provided for us. And God, we are so blessed and we are going to celebrate it and we're going to share it with each other. So these were the three main festivals that the the people of God in the Old Testament and the Bible would go to every year. And you would go with your friends and your family and you would travel and it was awesome. And we know Jesus went. There's an account in the Bible about Jesus going to the first one, the Passover festival. Now, there's lots of stuff we don't know about Jesus when he was growing up. We know where he was born. He was born in Bethlehem. You know, there was a manger. We know there were shepherds involved. We know there was the wise people. And then there's a gap to when he's 12 years old. And what we know about him when he's 12 years old is that he goes to this Passover festival. And I think it's really interesting. There's so much we know about, don't know about Jesus as a man growing up or a young person growing up. But we know this. He had fun with his family and friends. And I think that's really important for us to know that Jesus experienced life to the full. And he wants us to experience life to the full. So we have a look at what happened with Jesus when he went to this festival. There's a couple of things I want to point out to you to help us have a great summer holiday this year. Holy days. So let's uh, read this. Every year, Jesus' parents travelled to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up as they always did for the feast. When it was over and they left for home, the child Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. Thinking he was somewhere in the company of pilgrims, that's because they were all travelling, they journeyed for a whole day and then began looking for him among his relatives and neighbours. When they didn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. Is anyone 12 here at the moment? Oh, yeah, I mean, you wish. Anyone close to 12? Caden, how old are you? Nine. Eleven. So you're a year older and mum and dad have travelled for a day and then they realise you're missing hope. How would you feel? <laughs> dad's like, yes, a day of peace. It's crazy, but there must have been so many families and friends that you just hung out with different ones. Have have you ever been at a party where mum and dad don't really know what you're up to? Yeah, you're there in the same space, but they don't really know what you're up to. You know, it happens, doesn't it? This is what has happened here with Jesus and his parents. So let's see what happens when they go back to Jerusalem. Who thinks that his parents are calm at this moment? (laughs) <laughs> Very calm. The next day, they found him in the temple. They found him in the place of worship, seated among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. The teachers were all quite taken with him, impressed with the sharpness of his answers, but his parents were not impressed. They were upset and hurt. I don't care how talented you are. I didn't know where you were and I was worried out of my brain. That's what we're getting here, isn't it? His mother said, young man, why have you done this to us? <laughs> Could you imagine your mum going off at you at this point? <laughs> your father and I have been half out of our minds looking for you. I love Jesus' response here. He said, why were you looking for me? <laughs> He's so 12. Didn't you know? <laughs> I was here all the time. Didn't you know that I had to be here dealing with the things of my father? But they had no idea what he was talking about. See, the generation gap has always existed, okay? So if you feel like you're not always understood, Jesus had it with his parents as well. So he went back to Nazareth with them and lived obediently with them. His mother held these things dearly deep within herself and Jesus matured growing up in both body and spirit, blessed by both God and people. 
And you know, it's interesting that Jesus had to mature and grow up in body and spirit. If Jesus, God's son, has to mature and grow up in body and spirit, don't we too? It's all right if you're still maturing, okay? Jesus had to do it. So what I want to um, encourage you with tonight is to holiday like Jesus, okay? We've seen what happened on his holiday. So let's just look at a few things we can do like Jesus on our holidays. And the first one is this. Enjoy your family and your friends and the time with them and the food and the fun. You know, I want you to enjoy catching up with your, you know, the people that are good for your soul. You know, and sometimes they're blood family and sometimes they're friends like family, aren't they? You know, sometimes they're people you know from church. Sometimes they might be neighbours or different ones. But it's good for, for us to get together and just have fun, to laugh have some good belly laughs, to get the banter going, you know, just, but to have the time where it's not pressured, where you can just enjoy each other's company. And, you know, one of the things I loved about our time away together was that we played. Well, actually, I've got to say, it wasn't really me, but it was Kirk and Josiah and Ruby played, and I got to, you know, read my book in peace. But it was nice. <laughs> it's whatever refills your love tank. But they, they created games, you know, and they're quite grown up. Shall I, can I reveal the game? No, she's pulling her face. <laughs> there was this game called <laughs> Lord of the Lilo. <laughs> Lord of the Lilo. And there's still a debate about who actually won Lord of the Lilo, but I can tell you it went on for hours. It's a great game. It's a great game. And the rules change all the time. So it's, you know... It's important to have fun. Enjoy this time. Enjoy it. Life can be full on and serious. Make the most of this holy time, this holiday. Enjoy the food. We had so much ice cream. I've been walking a lot this week trying to make up for it. But the McFlurries were amazing. Yeah, incredible McFlurries. And, the, every, and it was hot. So you have to eat ice cream when it's hot, don't you? So, you know, hopefully you'll remember how to get hot here again and we can enjoy <laughs> the ice cream. But we've got ice cream tonight so you can enjoy it then. But that's why we put on the picnics over August. That's why we create time and space for you to enjoy your family, your friends and to just relax and just get your love tank filled up. So Jesus was doing that. We know he was with the extended group. And it was something they did regularly. His parents weren't phased for a day, were they? It was after a day they realised something was up. The second thing I want to encourage you with is this. Is that we should go to God's presence in our holiday and not away from it. Because, you know, remember holidays are holy days. But sometimes I've found that because I've had a really busy time leading up to the holiday and it's been quite hectic, I just kind of go, wow, and I drop everything. And sometimes I drop the things that are actually really good for me in the process of that. You know, because I'm, I'm out of routine, I might not read my Bible quite as regularly as I normally do. Or I might not get to church as often, but I've found it doesn't always help me. Or I might start watching a whole lot of stuff on Netflix or, you know, binge watch something and it's really actually not helping me be more like Jesus because there's lots of stuff in it that God doesn't like. There might be lots of relationships that aren't the way God wants them or there might be, you know, lots of really negative issues going on. So I want to encourage you this summer to have a holiday with Jesus, not away from Jesus. And, you know... Um, one of the things we're sometimes tempted to do, especially when we travel away, is on Sunday you just go, oh, we'll have a sleep in. Because we get up early every Sunday normally. But you know what? We have someone in our family who will not let us do that. And you know what? I'm really grateful that we have Ruby in our family saying, we are going to go to church. So when we are not here, she's like, where are we going to church? So this is us on the Sunday when we're on our holidays. And um, these guys here are actually pastors <laughs> Um, from the UK, but they're now actually, uh, looking after a church in, in Cyprus. And so um, we went to their service and it was just great to be with them. It's great to be there and enjoy the time with them. But also then they took us out for lunch, which was awesome. We're on the harbour, but we ended up in the place where Paul from the Bible actually 
travelled through on his first missionary journey and they showed us, I don't know if you can see it, but it's just behind here is a marble post and this was a place where Paul actually was whipped 39 times. He nearly died for the sake of Jesus and we went to have a look at it on our holiday, as you do. <laughs> but you know what, actually it was incredible to have this connection with these guys because sometimes we forget God is still at work even though we're having a rest. And so he was linking us up um, with, the, with these guys. I have to tell you, it was incredibly hot. I sweated so much that day. <laughs> but um, I'm glad I did it. I'm really glad that we had that time on the Sunday, that we got to rest in his presence. And, you know, sometimes we don't have enough time to just hang with Jesus. But, you know, when it's, you're, you know, not at school or you're not at work, you actually have more time. And I want to encourage you, take time out to enjoy reading your Bible. Actually go, yeah, or read a book, or that's me, I love to read, but, or listen to some worship music. Don't just fill yourself up with stuff that won't help you with your relationship with God, but actually fill yourself up because you want to build yourself up so you're stronger at the end of your holiday, so you're rested at the end of your holiday, rather than the feeling worse. Because sometimes you can finish a holiday feeling rubbish if you let yourself gorge on the wrong stuff. Okay, too much ice cream, but sometimes too much Netflix or whatever will do it too. Sometimes it's about who we even hang out with on the holidays. The people that are good for us, hang with them. And, uh, you know, I've got a rule now with Netflix, two is the rule. When you're binging, just two back to back, that's it. Change it, do something different because it's easy getting a rut, okay? And it makes it last longer than two. All right, then the third thing is this. So we, I want to encourage you, you know, have the fun times, but have a holiday with Jesus. And the last bit is this. There's actually no place like home. And in the end of that passage with Jesus and his family, it said he returned home with his parents. He obeyed his parents and went home. And, you know, Jesus' real purpose was not to teach in the temple, even though he was really good at it. Jesus' real purpose was actually to grow up in that family, to become a carpenter, to learn how to work really hard, then to lead a bunch of guys for three years and then to go to the cross so that we could all be free. Remember that first festival was about us all being set free. And, you know, if Jesus doesn't return from the temple, he doesn't fulfil actually the purpose of God for his life. And sometimes when we're on holidays, we just can be like, oh, I just want to stay here forever. But, you know, the holiday is not your purpose. Your holiday is the time to refresh and be strengthened, but actually your purpose is where God's planted you. And come back stronger to there. Come back and become the person you're meant to be. There is a bit of work there in the place where, you know, you're meant to be in your purpose, but that's all right. Because Jesus actually invites us to walk through into his purpose with him. And he invites us to have a rest that's not just found in a holiday away, but a rest that's found in a relationship with him every day. And he wants you to learn to get into that rest because it's far more refreshing ultimately than having a trip away in a swanky resort. That, that finishes and then you've got to come back home and go, how on earth am I paying the bills for that now? Oh, my visa card. Ah! Actually learn to rest in Jesus every day. It would be far more refreshing, far more fulfilling as well. There is no place like home. And God has so much for every single one of us. You know, come back not with regrets, but come back looking forward to the next season, ready to go again. And, you know, Jesus invites us. Um, in Matthew 11, there's this wonderful invitation. He says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. There's the rhythms. That's the real rhythm of the summer. It's actually learning the rhythms of grace, of God's love for us. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And that's what I want to encourage all of us at the start of this summer break <laughs> is actually to come in to the presence of God, to crave the presence of God, to learn to sit in the presence of God and in get this rest that we need for our souls. It could be in the middle, middle of a busy time, but it could be in the middle of the summertime. But we need it both times. 
So I just want to invite Tim up on the, the keys, but I want to give us now an opportunity to respond to Jesus' invitation, to respond to his invitation to learn to rest with him. And, you know, you might feel like what it said there, are you tired, are you worn out, are you burned out? I just want to ask you to close your eyes so we can have some privacy as we respond. If that's you tonight, if you're saying, yeah, I'm feeling those things, I need the refreshing of Jesus. I need his rhythms of grace in my life. Whether you've known Jesus a long time or you're just getting to know him now, I want to invite you to pray. And I'm going to lead a prayer and I just want you to repeat it. And just, this is a prayer accepting Jesus' invitation to accept the rest that he offers us. So if that's you, I just want you to join. I know there's going to be several of us praying this prayer tonight. Dear Jesus, I thank you for the rest you offer me. And Lord, I'm tired. I'm worn out. I need your refreshing in my life. Please show me Jesus how to live in your rhythms of grace. Help me to choose your presence each day, whether I'm at work or at school or whether I'm on vacation. May this summer be a time of holy days, being strengthened by you, ready for your purpose, in my life, in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, um, I just know God really wants to prepare us for what's next, individually, but also as a church. You know, we um, that building is getting more and more finished all the time, and soon we'll be moving in there. And it's going to be such a change, but it's going to require us to be in full swing. But we can't do it in our own strength. We need to be strengthened by God and it comes from that rest with Him. And you know, tonight you might have prayed and you go, actually, I really need that. But actually, I want to know more about Jesus. I want to encourage you just to have a chat with myself or one of the other leaders about how you can be a follower of Jesus more. Because we want to show you, we want to help you become someone who lives in relationship with Jesus every day and walks in His saving um, work that He did on the cross. So I just want to conclude tonight by saying thank you. You know, we have been doing Friday Night Church now for about three months and it's been great. It's been so good to have you guys come along. We've learned a lot along the way. It doesn't happen on its own. It happens because people have sacrificed time. They've sacrificed a cruisy Friday night to be here. And I just want to thank every single one of you who made Friday night happen. So if that's you... I just want you to stand up and we are going to applaud you. So if you help make Friday night happen, stand up. There'll be a lot of you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Abby, Yami, lots of you do. Thank you so much. It's going to get better and better, but we are going to have a little break from Friday nights now. So um, stay posted. We'll let you know what's going on in September. So I think we need to celebrate. We're thanking you. So the ice creams have arrived. There's crisps. There's juice. There's teas. There's coffees. And there's something else. We're waiting two minutes. There's biscuit. Who wants a biscuit? <laughs> there's lollipops. So we're going to put the summer soundtrack on. We want you to play tonight. Have some fun. Have some laughs. And we'll see you on Sunday for church.